was four years older than me. He played the violin and we had a piano in the house and I think I was just always, always drawn to music. I was always drawn to what he was doing on the violin and of course so then I would just kind of go and um, tinker with the piano until I actually had formal lessons. This piece always spoke to me and it was for one particular movement. It's the child sleeping. And for me, that's, um, it's really the heart of the piece. It's why I learned this piece. For me, it's heartbreaking. I think as a child, I always was troubled sleeping. I, I was never a good sleeper, I'm still not. And it's all of my hopes and worries and concerns come out when it's time to sleep. And this movement really encapsulates it for me, but it, it also has hope to it. And this is, I think it's this one movement that brought me to Schumann that made me not afraid of it because it spoke so dearly. I think there is this constant tension within this piece about who is, who is speaking and what point of view um, childhood is being depicted. Is it from the child's point of view? Is it um, from the point of view of adults observing children? Is it um, someone at the end of their life reflecting on childhood? And for me, it's, it's all of those things. I think there, there are elements of that. Um, there is the mother singing to her little child, um, you know, comforting their child, envisioning all the, the, the troubles that lie ahead. There is the child and, um, at play, um, the kind of rawness and of, of the joy of childhood. And as I, I spoke about in the um, child sleeping, the, the troubles that the child experienced and um, it's, it's all of those things I try to encapsulate. I, it was really by accident, but I sort of fell into the scholarly study of historical recordings. It's hard to measure how it's changed my playing, but it's changed very profoundly how I think about music making. I think in the first instance, when I say that I've had some involvement with historical recordings, people automatically think performance practice. But the one thing that you quickly learn from comparing historical recordings is that the one defining feature is the diversity of playing styles. So which style do you adhere to? So I think this, this question of performance practice is in a certain sense not relevant. I think what it has meant for me is a search for something indefinable, I think. Today, the way we make music, um, it's we have a very literal approach. We play a tempo, you know, we play one tempo that's more or less unified throughout a movement. We synchronize things. Um, we play the notated rhythms exactly as they're written. If we deviate from these things, it's considered a sign of, of poor taste or bad musicianship. What I've learned is to deviate from that a bit. I think uh, when it comes to tempo, I might choose a tempo, but there's great elasticity uh, within it, and maybe I'm not so concerned with keeping the same tempo throughout. Sometimes I am, sometimes not. But at least that's a possibility. Um, for expressive reasons, I don't always synchronize things anymore. And these things, you know, you can't really, you can't define it, you can't notate it. Um, I might take a dynamic to mean a change in character rather than just something very literal about the volume. So in essence, I think that I've learned to search for something a bit more ineffable than, than maybe the more modern approach um, 
allow us for.